morning, and welcome to Highburn News Meet. Christ, uh, both those of us who are here in person and those who are joining us on the live We do have several announcements. Uh, I'm here to start with. The, the, uh, the okay, there is there is a red light, so so maybe the battery is going. Okay, <laughs> um, uh, this this afternoon um, we are we are meeting with with um, Reverend Doctor Marie and the Associate Conference Ministers. Bring it, bring it down, I reckon. Okay, can you can you hear me now? Okay, <laughs> um, uh, we are we are meeting with Marisa Laviola. Uh, those of you who serve on committees or who I have asked to serve on uh, temporary ad hoc task forces, anyone uh, is certainly invited to, to attend. She, she is going to talk with us about uh, leadership in our church as we move forward. And that starts at 2 o'clock, and it will go to about 4 o'clock. And that's this afternoon. Next Sunday, I, I, I wanted to, to share, uh, next Sunday is both Halloween, being the 31st of October, and then we're going to be celebrating All Saints Day, which is always November 1st. What we're going to do is go back to a very ancient custom. Uh, you might know that Halloween <laughs> itself stems from a pagan holiday that was before Christ, so it goes way back. About the 7th century um, in the Christian era, Christians put, put the two holidays, Halloween and All Saints Day, they kind of mashed them together. And Christians would dress up like people who they, they consider saints or people who had, had helped them in their faith journey. And that, and that lasted for a few hundred years, and then Halloween and All Saints Day kind of morphed into what we have, have now. So we're going back to, to, to an ancient uh, custom. And so we're asking if you are willing to, to dress up as, as a person who has meant a lot to you in your faith. Now, it might even be someone who lived centuries ago like Martin Luther, or it might be someone who has welcomed you into the 
church or someone who has changed your, your, your life. And so we're asking if you, if you would like to, to come in costume or you could bring a picture of that, of that person. Or someone has suggested that because it's Halloween, if you want to carve out a pumpkin into a Jack or Jill O'Lantern and, and dress up that pumpkin as, as the saint that you want to lift up. So, so next Sunday, it will be a combination of both kind of a somber occasion because we will be re remembering people who have passed during the last year and lifting them up. But it will also be, hopefully, a joyful occasion as we re remember, again, people who have meant a lot to us in our faith journey. And then... We we will be asking folks who would like to share during, during the sermon time next Sunday to share about, about this saint, okay? If you have any questions, you can ask me, me about it. Also, next Sunday, we're having, I think it's our first, right, our golf, our golf outing, um, and that's at Cool... Creek, and and we do have some people who have all already said they're going, but there is a room I understand if there are others who would like to join us. However, you need to let us know. Um, so if you would speak to either Sue Joyner or is it Shauna? Okay, uh, speak speak to either of them, um, and. And don't be concerned about your skill level. They've talked me into going, and my skill level is terrible with golf. But, but uh, so, so anyone who can hold a golf club is, 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 is welcome uh, to come. That will be next Sunday, and the first tea time is at 1230, and it costs $27. Uh, dollars. Okay. All right, and then we have just a few things that are coming up that, that we would like you kind of to put on your, either your mental calendar or your actual uh, calendars. Um, November 21st, and I know that sounds a lot in the future, but it's really less than a month away. <laughs> uh, no, November 21st, uh, we're going to be staying after church to decorate the church for Advent and Christmas. Uh, and so if you can kind of put that on your calendar, uh, the more the, uh, the, the merrier uh, to help us to decorate. And then during Advent, uh, which, you, you know, are the four Sundays before Christmas, we're going to be doing what I call dialogue sermons. Uh, and, and I will be doing a sermon with one of you each Sunday. And we're going to be lifting up the Old T -T Testament prophets. Um, and, and I will be kind of giving a background of that prophet. And then each Sunday, there will be somebody else, one of one of you, uh, who will be sharing how that prophet speaks to you, the, the words of the prophet and, and what they mean to you in the context of what we're going through today. So if you would like to volunteer, I'd be happy to talk to you, um, and we might all and tell some others uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to share. Are there, are there any other announcements? I think I've, I've covered that. Okay, okay, Susan. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. The, uh, the only other announcement we have is uh, 
is actually just a thank you. A thank you to the folks who came and helped out with the breakfast yesterday. Um, we had, I think, over 30 folks went through the line and for the, for our breakfast. And from what we're told, the um, the undies and the t-shirts were a big hit that were donated last week for Undie Sunday. So we do want to thank you for those donations from the congregation and encourage you to perhaps Great. keep those coming. Um, as we're getting into the colder weather, we're thinking things like socks and gloves may be helpful for us to have available to give out to our neighbors. So thank you for all of that. We do want to welcome each other and we want to declare uh, that Heidelberg is an open and affirming church of the United Church of Christ. In your bulletin, we do have our, our sentence, our paragraph that we typically read, where we say that we welcome everybody, wherever you are on your life or your faith journey. We want to remember an additional paragraph of, of that uh, declaration today, and I'd just like to read that to you. It's not in your bulletin. We'll, we'll get that in there. But... Um, we want to acknowledge that throughout history, the Christian church has often condemned the people that we talked about in the first paragraph. They've condemned and excluded gay and lesbian and bisexual transgender persons from the community of faith, or we've condemned that, con con that condemnation and exclusion by our silence. And so here at Heidelberg, we remind ourselves and we remind those who may be taking a look at us online that we hold that such discrimination is incompatible with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we commit ourselves to work diligently to end all oppression and discrimination with, which afflicts God's people in our society. We affirm and celebrate all relationships founded on the principles of God's love and justice. And so we will move on to our call to worship. If you can join me, please, with the responsive reading. God has called us to be people of love. God I didn't mean the, the syrupy stuff, stuff of, of movies and, and novels. Truly loving can sometimes be difficult. Yet we are called to reach beyond the difficult.
This morning, we hear about the healing of Bartimaeus. While his eyesight has tempor tempor had temporarily failed him, his faith definitely would not fail him. This from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. Jesus and his disciples went to Jericho. And as they were leaving, they were followed by a large crowd. A blind beggar by the name of Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When he heard that it was Jesus from Nazareth, he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Many people told the man to stop, but he shouted even louder, son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him over. They called out to the blind man and said, don't be afraid, come on, he is calling for you. The man threw off his coat as he jumped up and ran to Jesus. Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man answered, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, you may go, your eyes are healed because of your faith. Right away, the man could see, and he went down the road with Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Each Sunday, we have a sermon outlined, so feel, feel free to follow that. There are some questions uh, following the outline, uh, which, which we use uh, when we have the adult discussion time after service. But I, but I encourage you to perhaps re re reflect upon those questions after of the service. Uh, new wearable technology for the blind and the visually impaired has the potential, as you probably know, to make a huge if rents in the quality of life for so many, they are called various things. Uh, some people call them assistive tech technology or smart glass is. But while smart Glass is can help a person with their sight. They, like most technology, can't help that much with real insight. The blind beggar Bartimaeus that Don read about for us from the Gospel of Mark, Bartimaeus could have used some of this wearable tech before he encountered Jesus. Does. But the Gospel writer Mark re re reveals that. Artemis actually could probably see more clearly than Jesus' own disciples where it counted in real discipleship. We know from the story there in Mark that when Jesus passed by, Artemis began to shout out, Jesus, son of David, have, have mercy on me. Now the term son of David calls to mind the kind of Messiah 
that would be a military type of ruler, like the original King David. But Bartimaeus sees that this son of David is different and is one who comes with mercy and not to wrath. In declaring Jesus as the merciful Messiah, however, Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus also seems to reveal that he sees more clearly the truth about himself. In contrast to James and John, who you heard about in the scripture last Sunday, who just before this episode in the Gospel of Mark, James and John seek to sit beside Jesus in his glory. But they want that as a way of enhancing the way that others see them. Not as former fishermen, but as powerful associates of the Messiah or the king. But it appears anyway that Bartimaeus sees his own situation more clearly than James and John saw theirs. Unlike the sons of thunder, Bartimaeus recognizes his blindness and his need for mercy. He isn't trying to use Jesus as a way to gain glory for himself. He doesn't argue for his own righteousness. He doesn't complain about the unfair of it all, although he certainly could have. He simply wants mercy. His persistent cry seemed to annoy the crowd but his cry caught Jesus's attention. The gospel writer Mark makes the point that Jesus stood still before telling the crowd to call Bartimaeus to him. Standing still, would enable the blind Bartimaeus to find Jesus and to come to him. And Bartimaeus does exactly that. Notice Jesus' question to the blind man. It's actually the same question that he asked James and John earlier. What do you want me to do for you? 
the disciples, James and John, wanted Jesus to make them great or, or, or at least to make them look great. But Bartimaeus only wanted to see again. All along, Bartimaeus may not have been able to see physically, but he had an expansive vision of a merciful Messiah who could open a new world for himself and others. His spiritual smart glasses, so to, so to speak, were working perfectly. If we go back in history and go back a bit in the Bible, when the you know, King David entered, Jer entered Jerusalem against the Jebusites as a conquering hero, the inhabitants of the city taunted him by saying that the blind and the lame will turn you back. And we read that from 2 Samuel 5. But we also read that David would take the city of, Jer of Jerusalem and thus the blind and the lame were, were, were actually pushed aside and they were removed before his entry into the city. But the son of Dave did, in contrast to his ancestor, re removed the blindness of the blind as he enters the city. The story of Bartimaeus is a reminder that this Messiah has come to restore the sight of those who have been blinded by all kinds of things, not only their physical sight, but those who have been blinded by power, by despair, by exclusion, by privilege, and not through the power of might, but through the glory of the cross. And the glory of the cross can be seen in us. Jesus follow words. The glory of the cross can be seen in you and me. How? Reverend Talitha Arnold <clears throat> illustrates how. In 2005, the southwestern United States was in the 10th year of a devastating drought. The pinion trees that c c covered the hills throughout northern New Mexico were among the casualties of those dry times. Dressed by 
drought and susceptible to bark beetles. Those pinion trees died by the thousands. Once green landscapes turned brown and gray with dead trees. For long-time residents of that area, it felt like a death in the family, Reverend Arnold states. But in August of 2005, she says it started to rain. Within days, fields of wild flowers sprang up. She says that people couldn't believe their eyes. Yellow cow pen daisies, purple asters, and rare flowers not seen in over a century covered the land. Scientists observed that it wasn't only the rain that produced the riot of color. The needles of the dead pinion trees had prov 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 provided the mulch and the nutrients needed by long dormant seeds. Those pinion trees would never be restored, but their death gave birth to a new beauty as far as the eye could see. The gospel episode with Bartimaeus kind of does the same thing in a, in a metaphorical way. It, re, it reminds us that God's people and God's power and, and that we can, through God, call forth a kind of spiritual new life and joy even in the midst of the driest and the deadest of times. We are, we are re reminded that death can bring about new life, that lack of sight can, can result in new sight. Artemis actually called the people of his time, and he calls us to trust God's possibilities, whether it be acres of cowpin daisies and purple asters, or whether it's new sight or insight. Artemis always had a vision of hum humility, faith, and a desire to follow the one whose throne is a cross. It's not the latest had it that you and I need. 
It's that kind of faith. Amen. I would call us now to a few moments of silent prayer. I know that there are, there are a lot of things that are on our hearts and our minds, both things that are going on in our own lives, uh, things going on on the national and world scale, um, for, like, like the continuing pandemic continuing violence in so many areas. Now with the soaring prices in the stores uh, because, because of, of a supply uh, problem. So, so we bring what's on our hearts and our minds to God, to the divine presence as you would know it. I would encourage all of us that in the midst of all that's going on, that we come to God in silent prayer also, asking where the joy is. Because as people of faith, we do have joy. That might not mean that we're happy all the time, but we have joy that we want to share. And so I'd ask that we spend a few, a few moments in silent prayer. Um, um, and I would ask that you join in the unison prayer, and that will be followed by a version of the Lord's Prayer that we have done before, and we will intersperse with verses from I would be true. Let us join in the unison prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, for each breath we take, for freedom to choose, and for the gifts of your word, your power, and your love. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, O oh God, when we consider how you have entrusted so much to us. May we be worthy of that trust. May we be a people who are unafraid to live as fully and as richly and as inclusive as you want us to live. Help us, O oh God, as followers of Jesus, to multiply all that you have given us, to risk spreading your word and perhaps seeing it misunderstood, to gamble by loving those whom others think worthy only of hate, and to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good to us. Help us to be faith-filled and to desire to increase your glory and your goodness in this world. Make us people who share in both word and deed that which you have given to us. We pray for the church gathered here today, both here at Heidelberg UCC and around the world, that it may encourage all of its members to discover, develop, and use all their gifts, those of nature and those of grace. We pray for those who are poor in body or in spirit, 
for those oppressed and heavy laden, for those sick or in despair. Minister by your spirit and by us to all those for whom we have prayed. and Help us to walk faithfully in the path of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Eternal Spirit, source of all that is and ever and ever shall be, loving parent, in whom we discern heaven. May knowledge of your holiness inspire all peoples, and may your commonwealth of peace and freedom flourish on earth until all of humankind Heed your call to justice and compassion. I would be true, for there are those who trust me. I would be pure, for there are those who care. I would be strong, for there is much to suffer. I would be brave, for there is much to dare. I would be brave, for there May we find the bread that we need for today and for the hurts we cause one another. May we be for forgiven in the same measure that we forgive. I would be friends of all the full, the friendless, I would be giving and forget the gift. I would be all. <coughs> I know my weakness. I would look up and and love and live. I would look up and laugh and love and live. In times of trial and temptation, help us to be strong. When life seems overwhelming, help us to endure. And thus, from the yoke of sin, de deliver us. May, your, may you reign in the power of human love, now and forever. Would be prayerful through each busy moment. I would be constantly in touch with God. I would be tuned to sense God's slightest whisper. I would have faith to keep the past Christ strong. For, for our offering, we are, we are reminded that we do have offering plates, uh, both in the front of the sanctuary um, and on the t t t t table at the, at the back door, too. Also, of course, you were sent a letter uh, this past week asking 
uh, for you to consider uh, pledging to the church uh, for the coming year, and we and we do welcome your your re return pledge cards, and you can put them in a box there on the table. The wonderful works of God surround us. How will we show our gratitude? The generosity of God exceeds all our limits. How will our manner of life reflect the, the abundance of God's mercy. Surely our offerings are one measure of our response. Let us present them with joy and thanksgiving. And I invite you to pray the offering prayer for all the great and wondrous things you have done for us, O oh God, we are grateful. You give us strength to go on when we are troubled and discouraged. You grant newness of life as we share in Christ's resurrection. We want to pass on the good news through this offering and by the way we live each day. Lead us and guide us with your steadfast love that we might channel your gifts to all we meet. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's reading of poetry is Unfolding Light by Steve Garnas Holmes. And again, we return to the story about Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar. Tarry over this story. Let it seep into your imagination. Pray your way through it. Like Bartimaeus, you sit on the edge of your way, your life. Jesus shares the road with you walks on your way, your life. He's been there all along. Imagine that. Something in you yearns for his presence and his grace. Let it cry out. Voices tell you to be quiet, that your yearning is unwelcome. But Jesus stops. He stands still. Imagine Jesus in no hurry. Jesus calls to you. He wants to hear you. Note how Jesus' invitation overrules those discouraging voices and take heart. Bartimaeus threw off his cloak to come to Jesus. What do you need to throw off? You stand before Jesus. He looks at you calmly. He says, what do you want me to do for you? How does your heart respond? Jesus says, your faith has made you well. Your faith is not your beliefs. It's your reaching out. Jesus meets it. Give thanks. Jesus tells Bartimaeus to go his way, but instead, he follows Jesus on the way. What way does God's grace invite you to follow?
a like a roof. God is over our heads. Like the horizon, God is beyond us. Like water in a pitcher, God is within us and in the pouring out of us. Like a pebble in the sea, we are in God. Let us go out and change our world as God has changed our lives. And so we send each other out with the peace of God in American Sign Language. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.